Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, I'm with my partner, John Coleman, and a very special guest, Bill Jordan. How are you guys? Good. Doing great, guys. Thanks for having me back. Hey, Art and Bill, um, do you guys ever, I, I, Art, I know you grew up in Brooklyn, and you've yeah. been back to New York a number of times. Bill, you're a South Carolina, North Carolina boy right now. Did you grow up there, and, and have you ever been back home? Uh, no, I didn't grow up in North Carolina. I moved here in 1986. I grew up in Newport News. It, well, again, it's debatable that as far as growing up. I was born and raised in Newport News, Virginia, so the Tidewater area. Um, and I went back there, man. I, it's it's a bittersweet thing going back because it's a it's the feel of the place is a little different. It's not it's not like a, a snapshot out of the old Andy Griffith show. It's not all that warm and fuzzy anymore. That crime has increased, and oh, it, 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 it just seemed, it seems it seems small. I mean, it seems so big to me as a kid. And yeah. you go back now. That was part of my point. Is like as we get older, things shrink. And part of that is how our memories play out. I went back in uh, 2017 for a high school reunion, which I love high school reunions because I was not, it's not that I was unpopular, but I was not popular, popular. And I couldn't talk. I didn't feel comfortable talking to everybody. And now that I'm, you know, advanced in my years and I've been married almost, you know, 39 years. I can talk to all the girls. I'm not afraid of them anymore. <laughs> I, I, I love the reunions and I'm often the last one there. I'm just, it may be three in the morning, but it's like I shut it down. I see these people once every five years. But the next morning after my reunion, I rode around and I rode by a couple of houses where I had lived and you just go by and you just, the memories like out of a fire hose, man. Yeah. It's, just the little things you remember, or at least think you remember. And I was, I had gone back before, years before, when my parents were still alive. And I took my wife and daughter by this house down the street from where I lived until like I was in third grade. And I said, and down here at the corner is where I learned to ride a bike. And yes. in, my, in my mind's eye, the driveway was like, you know, 25 <laughs> yards long and the slant on the driveway, the incline was about 60 degrees. And I just sat at the top of the, of the driveway and just picked my feet up and I went down and I wrecked in the street, and I <laughs> pushed it up, pushed it up this incline. And I get, I did it again. I learned to ride a bike and I got down to that house, my friend Gary's house. I got there. The driveway looked about 10 feet long and the slope was like that. <laughs> But in my mind, I mean, it was so much bigger, so much sure more. Sure. Or driving by, driving by another old house of ours, and I look at the yard, and I went, "How did it take me an hour to mow that? It's nothing." But man, I, I, I do love it. I, I say bittersweet, but my gosh, I, I, I'm blessed. I mean, I've got a brother who's deep in dementia. Uh, so I don't take my memory for granted. It can be a curse at times, uh, but the memories when I go back home, man, they're they are for the most part priceless. Even the bad ones, I mean, it, it's they're priceless. All about growing up, man. I love it. Yeah, yeah. it oh. it is uh, I, it is a uh, uh, as you say bittersweet. Uh, my experience has been you're right. The memories are what make it worthwhile, but the right. reality of how things have changed, you know, in 30 years or 50 years, whatever it is, or, or 60 years, you go back to quote the old neighborhood. I, I grew up in the New York area and my grandmother had a house almost on the water, Beacon Beach, New Jersey. Beacon Beach is a little bitty town. I even, don't even know if it's incorporated. It's not far from Redback, New Jersey. It's on that cusp of right on the ocean, very popular summer place. And she had what I thought was the biggest house in the world, you know, with a big driveway. And she was two houses down. This is, I remember accurately, she was two houses away from the beach. So you could walk two houses past her house. You'd be on the beach. And, and there was the, this beautiful sandy beach that stretched forever 
out to the ocean. And, you know, it smelled good and it looked good. The sand was crystal clear white. I went back. Uh, my kids were, were young, we, so I was 30 years old. I went back probably only 20 years later. And not only was the house small, which, you know, like you point out, but the beach had been racked by hurricanes or something like that. And they had plowed it up. So there was no more beach. They had plowed it up into sand dunes. And the sand dunes were filthy. There were garbage in there. There were condoms. There was bottles. There was, oh, it just made me sick. So I've never tried, since then, I've never tried to go back, quite go back anywhere uh, because I know while the memories will be good, the reality is painful sometimes. Well, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you that um, uh, because I used to run national sales forces even after we moved out uh, to California, uh, I got back to New York many times and there were two main places that uh, I remember. Uh, one, Brooklyn, where I uh, went to high school. I was born there, we moved away and then came back by the time I went to high school. And also on Long Island, where uh, once we got married, we bought a house in Merrick. So I've been back to there and go through the neighborhood, and it pretty much looked the same because that was recent. But I remember once when my son was uh, uh, maybe in his junior year in uh, high school, and uh, uh, my wife went off to so do something, and we decided to take a, a, a road trip, just the two of us. And I happened to be in, uh, in Europe at the time doing some work. I flew back in. I forgot where I flew back in, but I know that I rented a car and then I was going to meet my son who was flying from the West Coast uh, to New York. And because I had that car, and I, I think I was picking him up in Newark or something, so I rode through the old neighborhood of Brooklyn. And uh, for me, it was great. I mean, it looked exactly the same. Uh, the uh, apartment building where we lived in Flatbush and I was still there. A really a court around the corner was still there where we used to gather for pizza at uh, midnight and one o'clock in the morning, all the neighborhood kids. Uh, <laughs> Brothers Restaurant, where I became uh, a counterman and uh, learned my cooking skills, which I used uh, in, in, in later on in college for summer jobs, uh, running restaurants and things like that. Uh, the bowling alley, where I was a pin setter, uh, uh, was still there. Everything looked really? exa It looked exactly wow. the same. And I, unfortunately, I, I got to see it myself and not with my son. I picked him up and then I drove him around New York City to show him all the buildings which he had never seen. Then yeah. we went to Canada and uh, just had a great uh, summer trip with my son and myself. Uh, yeah. Doing all sorts of, we went to Statue of Liberty, all those kind of things that he never got to do because we moved at an early age. But to me, going back to Brooklyn was just absolutely, it was almost as if it had frozen in time. Uh, and it was the same. The Wolfie's restaurants were there. Uh, Midwood High School, Brooklyn wow. College, all looked exactly the same. So, so some places never change. For me, they never change. And maybe, yeah. maybe my, my memory is frozen in time, but it was a, a, a great trip back. I had a lot of great memories from, uh, from that neighborhood. That's great. That's I'll tell you, the, uh, mentioning real quick, and just as a follow-up, you're talking about being in my reunion back in 2017, the next morning before I left town to come home to the Raleigh area. Uh, I stopped by the cemetery, is that what I do when I'm in town? And I spent some time with my mom and dad there. And uh, as soon as I left there, I thought, okay, I know exactly where I'm gonna go. And I drove down the street, it was just a few minutes away, and I turned on the street and I watched the numbers. Here's 40, 42, 44, and I pulled up in front of number 46, and as I pulled up and parked, I'd never parked before, I'd been by the house a bunch of times. I pulled up and parked, a couple was backing out of the driveway and I got out and I introduced myself and asked if they lived there and they said, yeah, they did. I said, well, the reason I, I ask you is because my parents got married here. And when I say here, I mean in your house. And I asked if I could just kind of walk up and see the Stick because there's a picture after their wedding of my my paternal grandfather who was a Baptist minister. He married them, and with my mom and my dad on the on just the little stoop, and they say you know knock yourself out, help yourself, and they drove away. And I'm walking up to the stoop, and I you know I get a picture of it, and I've I've pasted this I've posted this on Facebook before of then and now, and it's 
it's almost you know obviously this the number of steps that the the structure hasn't changed the sconces have been changed and stuff but just looking but the weird thought you have or i had anyway of walking up and just wondering could there be any atoms of dna or something somewhere in the dirt or on the brick of my parents um I mean, just um, that moment frozen in time from April 12, 1942 until that day in 2017 when I was standing exactly where they stood. Man, that just blew me away. And thinking that they had no idea, they little would they know that they were going to have three boys and that years later, one would be visiting and standing right where they were when they got that picture taken. That kind of stuff just... Some people think it's kind of weird. It just fascinates me. It fascinates me. It is fascinating. And in many ways, you really can go home again, can't you? Yeah. 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 Well, I have, to, I have to admit that I did, uh, we lived uh, for a short while in, in Far Rockaway, uh, in Queens, which is also near a beach. And um, uh, I grew up on, uh, at that time at 1349 Gibson Street. And when we went back, um, uh, I went down the street once and the, there was a large, uh, uh, what most people would call a standard Christmas tree in the front yard. That was gone. Uh, all the hedges were gone. Um, it was a bit dilapidated. Uh, the sidewalk where I broke my first broke my arm, uh, well, learning how to teach myself how to skate on a Sunday morning. That was all in worse condition than when I broke my arm. And it was just, it looked like a terrible uh, a place. I didn't remember it all. It was really run down. But I used that 1349 as my number on a movie that I made later on for, <laughs> for a house that had to have a number on it. So, uh, but that, that was a disappointment. Uh, so I admit that it depends on, you know, if you've grown up in a couple of places, uh, you know, spent more than a few yeah. years in each place, uh, some may make you feel good and some may disappoint. And uh, uh, I, I particularly appreciate, uh, Bill, when you go back, uh, you have a cemetery to visit. Uh, I haven't been able to go back to my, because it's really inconvenient, even though it's in New York, in a place. So unless you have a car, you're never going to get there. So yeah. it's nice that you're able to visit uh, lots of your old haunts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, that's a, really that's a subject for another day, I think. The, the idea of visiting the dead, visiting and honoring, you know, people who are relatives um, in, in the cemetery. Um, of course, not everybody's in a cemetery. So but let's save that for another day, because uh, right. I want to I want to precious save these precious memories uh, about going home. Yeah. Uh, great. OK, so let's do one last shameless plug for uh, Embrace the Boom. How can you people, guys are so how, gracious. How, how can people find uh, uh, where to locate you on the internet? Embrace the Boom is just, is first of all, let me say, is this I sort of anchor in my day because I start my day normally with a little music on YouTube. I'll get back into something baby boomer-like, like 60s or 70s, put in my earbuds, and I'm down here by myself, and I pour my coffee into my Embrace the Boom mug. And this reminds me to live the best life that I've got, that I'm still here, so I must still have a purpose. So Boom is for baby boomers. And you can get a mug and you can see links to my YouTube. I've got 15 practices that when I do them, I lead a better life. It's just the way it works. And it's stuff I wish I'd known when I'd been and, growing up. And say it out in. loud. www. BillJordanEmbraceTheBoom.com. Free shipping, by the way, I've switched. I've now got offering free shipping on all domestic orders. All domestic orders. Oh, so, baby... Embrace, so, baby. I'm embracing the boom. Embrace the live boom. Live your life. Live your life. Forget your age and embrace the boom. Amen. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.